Ebola and the real health crisis in America. With the death of Mr. Thomas Duncan shortly after his arrival from Liberia, West Africa, the Ebola crisis has burst into millions of news screens, generating deep levels of fear and xenophobia. To be sure, Ebola is a serious health concern, for it has a 70% mortality rate, named after a river in Congo near the first known outbreak in 1976. It's also known as hemorrhagic fever. But to beat back the fear, public officials have been playing down the threats posed by the virus, often armed with little more than hope and false confidence. For politics, often more imagery than reality, is a poor barrier against the seriousness of viruses, disease, and death. This isn't about the Ebola crisis. It's about the American health care crisis, made possible by a flawed business model that prioritizes profit above all other things, even life itself. Consider this. When Mr. Duncan first entered Texas Presbyterian Hospital, he was interviewed by a screener, prescribed antibiotics, and sent home. That person, that screener, was more likely than not not a medically trained healthcare professional, but a receptionist perhaps armed with a checklist to cover. Chances are she was perhaps the lowest paid staff until one considers the janitorial workers. This business model, one followed by most institutions in America, is now exposed as ineffective, dangerous, and the least health conscious. That was a business decision driven by the bottom line of money, not life. Similarly, the recent crisis has exposed how vulnerable nurses are in this system, for the business perceives them as less valuable than doctors. Hence, they are paid less, trained less, protected less, and work more. Who spends more time with ailing patients, doctors or nurses? Who has the closest physical contact with patients? But according to published accounts, nurses had their necks exposed and when they complained, were told to use tape to cover up. This is a system that protects profits and prestige, not people. For doctors get the most protection, nurses the least. When Ebola first struck West Africa, the U.S. mobilized soldiers to go there. Cuba, which has advanced biotechnical medical expertise with tropical diseases, sent over 1,000 doctors to help treat and heal people. Cuba, little socialist Cuba, has sent over 135,000 healthcare professionals to 154 countries, more than the United Nations World Health Organization. Their Latin American medical school in Havana trains thousands of poor medical students from all over the world for free. Not much of a business model, but one hell of a human model. From Imprisoned Nation. This is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle. Oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. But first I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast and staff or affiliates. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. <clears throat> Today's topic, to quarantine or not to quarantine? That is the question. Hmm. But before we get started, I want everybody to introduce themselves, starting to my right. King Noble Black Supremacy. All right, Black Rulership. C. Nito from West Africa. Like be real. Uh, you know me, it's your boy Vincent Cheeks, uh, actor, activist. Oh, Yanga. Yanga. <laughs> right, all right. You got any announcements, gentlemen, before we get started? Yeah, one quick announcement. Uh, please come out Wednesday, October 22nd, 4 p.m. to Woodrow Park. Uh, we will be having a rally uh, in a march uh, to help in mass incarceration of black and brown people and to help stop police brutality. Once again, that is Wednesday, October 22nd, 4 p.m. at Woodrow Park uh, near the campus of Georgia State University. Please come out and support. Thank you. 
Ah. All right, gentlemen. Um, I want I want to start the show off by always I always like to give the origin. You know, I think they talked about Ebola coming out of the Congo. Uh, where it originally is said to have been found, created, whatever in Germany. Oh, whoa, um, wait, whoa, okay. Right. Elaborate. Seventy six. Uh, some scientists playing around with stuff. Wait a minute! You mean to uh, tell me this genetic warfare here? Oh yeah. It's not oh, natural. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing natural about the Ebola Zaire strain, sir. That, would explain that is man, man, man made. Um, but it was uh, in Germany that this happened. Now, what you're referring to in 1989 in the Congo, there was an outbreak of the Zaire strain of Ebola, which is the current strain. Um, I think there were maybe around 200 deaths right. from that outbreak, but it was very quickly and very easily contained. And that was in 1989. So fast forward to 2014, and it's been a nine month, 10 month, uh, outbreak going on and apparently they're saying now if they don't get it under control that by the start of 2015 uh, it could be up to 10,000 deaths per week over in West Africa from the uh, Ebola virus um, so yeah we got a lot going on with it man we're gonna get into everything today uh, what you're talking about we got a new Ebola czar uh, Rob Klain we got Canada helping out, trying to send over 800 vials of vaccine to the World Health Organization tomorrow. Uh, Is Nick, it the EVAC or the, e, the Z? No, Z no, 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 no. It's not ZMAP. Okay. ZMAP is the real cure. They're not making that yet. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm a little confused here. I didn't know why still ZMAP is the serum right. that they use to cure uh, Dr. Brantley mm -hmm. and the other doctor. Uh, okay. Nancy Wrightball, I believe her name is. There's a difference between a serum and a vaccine. Right. A serum is the actual blood of an animal that has built up the antibodies to the Ebola virus. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when you use a serum, it will fight off the Ebola virus more effectively, i.e. Dr. Brantley and Dr. Wrightball. Um, I'm sorry, I lost the my vaccine. Thought. Yeah, the vaccine, on the other hand, is what is made from the serum. And with the vaccine, you mean a cheap diluted down version? Is a cheap diluted version of the serum, which is the cure. And so if you get the vaccine, mm -hmm. depending on your the strength of your immune system, you may or may not make it. Oh, wow. So, depending on the strength of your immune system. Of your immune system, right. right. So, with the serum, that's the cure. So, pay attention closely to when you hear these words right. on the news in the news media. Because when they're talking about the serum, they're talking about the actual cure. When they're talking about the vaccine, they're talking about a watered down right. version See, of the cure. Goes, which leads to into racial conspiracy theories, of course, about population control in Africa right. and things of that nature. So. And then we can talk about medical reform, and we can get it into a whole lot. Mm -hmm. this oh, that's real good. Good. Can you know about see? Let's get to it. <laughs> well, I see some important things. I always try to give an alternative perspective on, on what's going on. And I see the ISIS scare as an attempt to gain a certain control over the American population right. in order to create uh, a police state. Right. With ISIS. And, and I see fear. Right, with the Alex Foley, the, the false beheading situations. Mm -hmm. And I see that it, it failed. It didn't work effectively. They want to control how we leave the country and they want to kind of, you know, kind of march down on people and their rights and their constitutional rights, kind of suspend the Constitution and just go into this terrorist attack that was uh, very similar to 9 11. That didn't work. We saw Ferguson with the same thing. We saw them blowing up the racial situation in Ferguson in order to try to implement some type of police state, blow it up, send Eric Holder down there to try to gain control over America because the federal government is losing power. That didn't work. That died down. So now it's the Ebola scare. They're trying to do the same thing. They're going to try to use the Ebola as a tactic in order to just suspend people's constitutional right, invade countries. They're going to invade American people over here just like they would invade right. people in other countries. 
under the Ebola, they're going to come and shut down your whole town. They're going to snatch right. you out of your house. Right. They gonna, it's going to be like a witch hunt. Right. And it's going to give the, the government <clears throat> full range of power and motion right. in order to topple or control or move in on whoever they want to. So I think this Ebola thing is, is another tactic that they're Fear using. Because now they're even telling you how you can fly. You can't fly over here. You can't fly right. over there. So right. all these things have in common is how we're going to control the mobility and the freedoms of the American people. That's what I see with it. I, I agree with it. We were talking about that earlier. Break that down. <clears throat> I mean, he said it. That's the same thing that I was seeing earlier and you know, when you and I were talking about it. It's the only way to really, in a, an alleged democracy, or a place that even has the farce of a democracy, that you'll be able to take the rights of the people is the people have to vote away their own rights. That's right. So they have to yeah. have a boogeyman. Right. And like the brother <laughs> was saying, man, with the ISIS thing, that didn't work out. With the Ferguson thing, it didn't work out. So now, under this, under some medical pretense, they can come in, they can start quarantine, they can martial law. I said this when I for the first hey, I had a speaking engagement in Dallas. Okay. That I went to Dallas and this was right after the Ebola scare. And right. my thing was going to Dallas, everybody, you know, the people were telling me, You worried about going to Dallas doing your speaking engagement? I said, No, I'm worried about getting back out of Dallas. I don't want them to quarantine right. Dallas. <laughs> right, right. Get right. Them yeah. Out of there, you know, right. before they stop letting right. buses go out and playing, because that's what it all basically what it all boils down to. The ability to control the mobility and the movement of the people. You know what I'm saying? And if they can start saying, just like, you know, this guy, the, the African that came back and it was uh, misdiagnosed and they let him go out and then all of a sudden, right, right. right, they come out and they had to quarantine 100 people and they're cleaning schools. And they say, all of this is a precursor mm -hmm. uh, for what's to come. Right. You know, and like I said, if they, if they can spoke, spook the people, then they will naturally sign away their rights. You see our white rights being eroded. Under their alleged, un, under their alleged constitution, the, the the rights of the people, uh, the American people here, and the so-called American citizens, you and I, the African people here in America, uh, you see that the uh, the rights, they're already signing away their rights with that proposition. What is it, 22 right. by Obama did, where they can just hold people indefinitely. Where now they having cell phone taps, tapping right. the citizens. Where they come, they have no no warrant uh, searches and mm -hmm. things like that. Right. So now you just see it going on. So. Naturally, because I know when they say pandemic or for our health, we, we'll vote anything in giving all powers to the state to allow them to contain yep. and control that. Yep. Most okay. definitely. Most definitely. Um, yeah. I agree with everything you just said. And we got a lot of stuff we can talk about with Ebola over here in the States. Mm -hmm. But my man C. Needle came on the show today. He's a Liberian native. And he came to give us some Liberian perspective on what's going on over there in West Africa. Brother, let us know what you know. Uh, about. Yeah, brother, though, but first, brother, because not, not not a lot of people, not a lot of people are hip to Liberia, right? And that's why we love Liberia. This <laughs> give us a little bit about, you know, what I'm saying the founding of Liberia and, and and about the Liberia a little bit before you go into. Oh yeah, Liberia, Liberia is actually like in Africa right now. They consider Liberia to be small America. Okay, that's yeah, because mm -hmm. okay. Liberia, yeah, Morovia was yeah. it was yeah it was after the name of James Moreau. Mm -hmm. He was based in I think Columbus, some part of America. Okay. If I get my history right, but he actually came from America, and he uh, went to Morovia and gave Liberia the independent. Up to now, Liberia still feel that they have uh, they never have the independent from like I mean, America. Mm -hmm. But if you follow the history and look at it, Liberia was uh, colonized by America. Mm -hmm. So the system, yeah, the system in Liberia is actually the same system in America. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you okay. compare Didn't it, know that. yeah, mm -hmm. when you compare it mm -hmm. with other West African, I mean, what is West African countries? Okay. Mm -hmm. The entire Africa, mm -hmm. the system in, in Liberia right now is the same system in America. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, the government system, everything, including all of that. But when it comes down to the Ebola situation, I just talked to one of my friends. I always on the line talking back home to see what's going on and stuff to see how my people doing. I right. just talked to one of my <coughs> friends today and she told me they currently had a curfew in Liberia. Mm. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, in like addition- Curfew's yeah. supposed to stop her disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. In well, addition well, to what my friends yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I ain't calling you off, but, I mean, that's not a medical solution. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. it, it's far away from medical solution by police officer they got a United Nations team out there, your UN. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? United Nations team out there right now. And the guy is whipping people with rattans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whip. Yeah. Like you can't even come out. After the time, they set for curfew. If they find anybody out, you're going to get whipped. And I try to figure out wait. after, you know. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. It's crazy. 
So they've implemented a curfew. You know what time the curfew is? Yeah, the curfew is uh, 11, 11 it's the time p.m. that the Ebola goes down. And goes to right, sleep. right, right. It goes <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you break the curfew, then you end up getting Oh, yeah, you're already whipped. problem with the law. You get either whip or if you, if you put a resistance that you can't get whipped, you're having to face you have to face injustice. Wow. Yeah, for medical situation, you have to face injustice. So uh, it, it drew my attention today when she called me. I was sitting up there. I'm like, oh, I just got invited to the TV station. I'm going to go up there and uh, get a little emphasis about what's going on and stuff like that. So basically, that's what's going on right now. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. A lot of news coming up. And you, we haven't found the actual reason, you know what I'm saying, of the Ebola, where it derived from. My man just came up and gave me another idea, mm -hmm. and I would have to translate the idea over to the, um, the journalists in Liberia, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody having to talk about the German situation. Mm -hmm. They derived in Germany. They said monkeys. And I know I was in Liberia. I came to America when I was grown. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was in Liberia. We eat, we eat monkey meat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a natural meat. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We eat all that. I never got affected from it. My dad, my mom. Right. We are straight traditional people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. It kind of strange and attacking human souls mm -hmm. to tell you that right now monkey meat is somehow affecting Attack people. Yeah, yeah, right. That Ebola, right. Where everybody know Ebola been existing mm -hmm. yeah, a long time. So let me ask you this question: How do you and the people of Liberia feel about President Obama in the United States sending military people over there to help with the outbreak of Ebola instead of sending doctors, money, equipment? I mean, everybody have their own conception and um, mind views when it comes to issue. I think a lot of people not really happy with that from the situation, from comments and other things on, on Facebook and comments on YouTube. Right. It's a lot of negative comments you receive about the help mm -hmm. yeah, to that. So I feel a lot of people not happy with that. From my point of view, it's unnecessary. Right. Of military going right. in a medica I mean in in a in a in a in a, in a sickness situation right. somebody right, right, sick right. and you sending somebody out there to resist, you know what I'm saying, law and other stuff like that, it make no sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, because yeah. I'm 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 thinking to myself, if I'm part of the military and I'm being sent out there, my concern will be getting infected. Right. right. They're sending troops over there right. to that's to contain. Right. That's, right. Right. that's, that's to help with right. the curfew. That's, that's, that's right. the help with the curfew. Right. 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 Yes. Right. 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 right, because the Ebola virus is only active from this period of time to this period. Right. Right. Yeah. According yeah. to your logic. That's what it says. Right, right. according I mean, to that logic. Is. Right. So right. My, my thing with Liberia is some, some uh, former slaves have went back to Africa and helped establish Liberia too, right? Yeah. So one of the things is, I quite, you know me, sometimes and now that I get my conspiracy, I question the place just like with Hades, the first black, the first free black republic, the first right. time. We, now you look at the state that Haiti's in. When you look at our people on the Pan-Africanist tip, uh, uh, repatriation, Liberia being one of the places right. of repatriation right. going right. back. Right. Then. So why is that attacked? I think that anything that has to do, especially with us having an independence, or us showing our power, or us showing making our mark in history. Getting our own. Or when it, right, getting our own yeah. or doing something that we were self-sufficient and independent on, specifically and intentionally comes under attack to dissuade the people uh, from even trying that and to go down a mark on history that the African man and woman can't do anything on their own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And I, and, I, and, and I think that. I even like, uh, I was teasing with, uh, even with Sue Ann, you know, I was teasing with Gideon, even with Sue Ann, when she had helped with, did her thing on um, Gideon's show we was talking about earlier when they had called her and I started to help out with some thing and I was just teasing Gideon and love you, Sue Ann, but I said, boy, you know they would call somebody white. They always take the white people to come in and save us. <laughs> we have to, so I think that anything with, with um, as far as, uh, as Africans having to do with their independence or empowerment that sometimes specifically and intentionally comes under attack. No, you're right. I look at that side of view too. I look at that side when I check that up. But he's selling troops out there I mean, Liberia, because everything, uh, like, Ellen Johnson Salif, the president of Liberia right now, she's the first female president in Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, all the African countries were like, they don't accept that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, that's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's real huge. And Ellen Johnson Salif got something to do with uh, the former president, um, what's her name, um, Bush. He, she got something to do with uh, the wife of Booth. The, both of them were in school. Mm. And her, her case, 
even the guy, Charles Stidham, our former president who is in the head right now for all the war crime and things, the seven years civil crisis in Charles Liberia. Taylor? Charles Stidham. Yeah, yeah, Charles Stidham. So, he, yeah, right. right. <laughs> a trouble guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just known to the war for that because it was seven years civil crisis, we went through. Every morning, every evening, you're going to hear gunshots. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear people shooting, rips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a whole lot. But all the folks, I'm a younger guy. The people like my father, my mother. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but from histories, when we read about the people, all the people established life in America. Because America, you see, the Nigerians go, Germany, they go, England. Mm -hmm for bricks. Mm -hmm. only, Nigerians in fire up here, they only came up here to make living. But out there, that main place they feel the need to go for, I mean, vacations and things, is mm -hmm. England, because mm -hmm. they were colonized by the British. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. But Liberian, we always look up. We don't focus on England, we focus on America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but he's sending troops out there too, I just feel he's showing he, he concern, you know what I'm saying? It just, very, very concerned. You, it's not about medication. You right. think that's showing concern? With I mean, him sending yeah. troops? Concern I mean, it's just, it just concern, but not what I feel. It makes no sense when it comes to the situation of the border right now. It, it complete is it's, it's no sense completely. Mm -hmm. But it just show concerns that he concerned about Liberia to be one of his smarter, America to be one of that smarter nation. Mm -hmm. That right. you know, what I'm saying in Africa, anything they had to go out there and start to control things. What's going on? Because she probably requested, that's what my, my, my friend told me today on the phone. Mm -hmm. She requested troops because the Liberians was in century for that, for the curfew. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody wants to have nobody their rights yeah. restricted. So you think he was showing concern for Liberia? For, for Liberia because... By sending in 3,500 troops? Troops out there to, I mean, uh, help the government in Liberia. You should want to make sure y'all Negroes yeah. don't cross the border. Right, right, right. I'm thinking it's more, I'm thinking, I'm going to be honest with it, I'm thinking it's more if somebody got to die, let it be Liberia. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you're right. sending 3,500 troops instead of right. 3,500 doctors, doctors. And right. in addition with some military if you need them, but when you're sending 3,500 troops, they're speaking to a military operation. Thank you. Right. It's, it's more Thank or less, in, in my opinion, and him being, you know, uh, the president of an imperialist state, because America's an imperialist state. <laughs> it is. You right. know what I'm saying? And it has world responsibilities and obligations, and it's going to maintain and retain its power of the world. We have to understand that. And I tell everybody this. President Obama didn't run on a nationalist ticket. He didn't run on a revolutionary ticket, a supremacy ticket, or this and that. He ran on a capitalist, imperialist ticket yeah. that is representative and reflective of a, a, a government that promotes and pu pushes white supremacy. Yeah, right? I don't and think he had. I don't is. think he had those other options. Right. So when you send, <laughs> so when you send in them thirty five hundred troops, it's more or less for world interest. You might have other colonized countries next to Liberia saying, "Look." You need to stop this stuff before either we go in and start knocking people off or whatever. So it just seems like he's sending the troops in to make sure that it's contained. Right. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. Liberia. Like Liberia. Yeah, he's quarantining Liberia yeah. off and separating it and, and, and segregating it from the rest of Africa. Ebola yeah, let's is, get noble in is biological terrorism right. mm -hmm. on Africa. Yes, sir. The I only agree with that. The only thing that's happened, because we saw how they let Duncan, the Liberian beloved brother, die. Mm -hmm. And the, the white Caucasian people live. Right. Because it is it is intentional, uh, the terrorism on Africa right. for imperialism, invasion, and right. population control. Mm -hmm. I want to give a definite solution to Liberia's Ebola problem. If we see that they only care about the Ebola when they get it, mm -hmm. right? This when serums and stuff start coming out, right? So mm -hmm. when you under terrorism, you must counter terrorism. When you at war, you must counter warfare. If they start giving every doctor over there the Ebola, the white doctors, mm -hmm. they would get a serum over there overnight. They would stop playing with this because mm -hmm. white life mm -hmm. is more precious than yeah. black life. I, and until the Liberians realize with. that they're under attack in that way, this Ebola situation will be solved overnight. They're not looking at it as terrorism. They're looking at it as just an epidemic. Just they wouldn't right. the white you know, like that is, that's intentional terrorism. When you have a serum that is healing people, but you're not getting it over to Africa fast enough. Either you don't what? give a damn, or you literally what? sitting there watching people die. Well, they say, they, said exactly. it, they said it's too difficult to make the serum. It's a very long, drawn-out process. It takes up to three they to six months. They went through it to heal them crackers, though. They had all the time and patience yeah, to, to heal those crackers. People. Right. right. First of all, this disease has been out since 1979. 76, so yeah. It's a long process. Yeah, figure figured that. Right. right. So long process. What? What? See, that's why we need our own doctors here. Mm -hmm. My because, thing is, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go My ahead. thing is, whatever they did to contain it in 1989 when mm -hmm. it was in the Congo, right? Why didn't they take those same 
precautions right. when it started in Liberia and Sierra Leone. And you know what I mean? Like what? I mean, you, you've known it's been around for years. And you're going to tell me that since this virus has been around since 1976, mm -hmm. there was already an outbreak in 89 that caused two to 300 deaths. And you're going to tell me when this outbreak started back in February that you all didn't have enough serum or enough ZMAP or the cure already stockpiled, knowing that this has already been in, going yes, on, point. you know what I mean? Like, like that doesn't been too make long. sense to me. Yeah, it's been too long. That, that doesn't make sense to me. Right what are the natural resources in Liberia? Oh, Liberia oh, is one of Liberia is one of the richest, um, one of the richest little African country. Well, there you have it. I mean, when you went in the Congo, they wanted the rubber trees. Right. Yeah. After they, after they did the little Ebola thing, they wiped out the opposition. Yeah. Probably right. we need to study who caught the Ebola. Was it, was it the guerrilla forces? <laughs> right. Was it the forces that were trying to preserve and reserve Congo, and did they wipe out that opposition and go in, and then you got Goodyear and everybody set up in the Congo? Same thing with Liberia. Right. Is there a people? One of the things you saying that this. This uh, uh, the Liberian government is built off the after modeled after the American government. Well, we you know see what happens to people who dissent and uh, uh, go against the so-called status quo of the thing. So shit, who is it that they're trying? Is it a matter of them trying to come in and claim the natural resources of Liberia? Well, well, they're always been doing that. that. Well, here's the thing, Yeager. We got to push the Chinese and the Russians out of Africa. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just between me and you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Same amount. laughs> right. We got to get them resources. Mm -hmm. You know, Africa is the richest. Look, we can't let people know that either. We got to yeah. make them see that. Right. It's right. still. Right. Yeah, we got to push them Chinese up out of there. Right. And them Russians. Boy, they carved Africa up like a Christmas turkey. Uh, you are yeah. still carving. Still right. carving it, right. right. I think Liberia, to, from what I see, is one of the most resistant. African states. I mean, mm -hmm. people say it's like America, but I see a lot of resistance mm -hmm. against imperialism right. in Liberia. Mm -hmm. So right. I think they they took down Gaddafi, then he was he had resistance against United States imperialism. Mm -hmm. So it's, let's just move our way through Africa and yeah. start right. taking right. down the resistance yeah. places, yeah. Yeah. spot sure. by spot. See, and, that, and I think those are things we have to look at. You know, places that this so-called Ebola hit. The, the previous before, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, Congo was a rich place and this yeah. and that. And then all right. of a sudden, once they gain that control of it and the fighting and stuff stops, the Ebola goes away. Yeah. It's yeah, like King Noble was saying, you know, uh, Liberia is very resistant. Show. You know what I'm saying? And the people are not with the BS. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? So you got to start knocking down these resistance That's fighters so and stuff like that. You can't go in with world attention and everything going in. You can't just go in and start knocking people off. But right. the moves that we're making, with the disease and not sending their medical attention, pulling doctors out over here to get cured and other people, some people getting serums, some getting vaccine, and then still send military forces. It just stinks. Yeah, it's obvious. It just stinks, yeah. right. And they're, they're obvious, they always do that. Yeah, it's obvious. Right. So either the Liberians are gonna, are gonna fight back mm -hmm. right. or they're gonna play this witch doctor stuff, play mm -hmm. this magical doctor stuff, mm -hmm. you know? We're at war, we're so war. we must fight war with warfare, right? You know? Right, well, Yanga made a good point, though, King Nobby. He said that I mean, they could just pull up, why don't they just pull out their doctors? You're saying, you know, I mean, they could just pull their doctors out. Then, then we, we have to come up with a plan B. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know? Let them pull their doctors out. I'm like, but, what are the, the doctors the doing? The issue is not, the, the, the reason they have their doctors there is they want to control right. Mm -hmm. Ebola. Right. So they're not they they're they're not going to pull their doctors out doctors out if they feel like the Ebola is going to continue to spread. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a military occupation of medical staff because mm -hmm. gotcha. they want to contain it, but right. they, they act like they want to cure it and solve it, but they just want to contain it. Right. So once you Keep show them there. that they're going to push it further beyond that containment, and they those doctors and stuff start getting it, and they're not going to support none of them, then they're going to have to start handing out serums before it becomes such a big epidemic mm -hmm. that it cannot be controlled mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And this whole question of how much they can control it is not logical to me. Right. If right. you got to wait 20 days to see if right. a person actually got mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to quarantine people, feed mm -hmm. them, house them, shelter them for 21 days, keep them isolated from populations, mm -hmm. get every area they went through, it could become an uncontrollable epidemic. Yeah. It's too... Uh, it's too whimsical. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have any definite way of saying, you got the Ebola, let's put you to the side. We gotta wait 20 right. days. Yeah. Right. So right. If, it, if it becomes a, an endemic epidemic that's affecting them beyond the population control or the destruction of the African people, then they will have to stop playing games and say, look, let's put an end to this shit yeah. before. Right. You know, because yeah. yeah. now he's getting killed by his own weapon. The nukes yeah. that he's, he's using is gonna blow him up. Mm -hmm. So right. it forces him to retreat with this type of uh, tactic that's mm -hmm. being done on the people. In addition, mm -hmm. I'm calling you off. In addition to what he just said, I think it makes a lot of sense. And um, from the previous call I received today, I picture the whole thing in front of me right now, and what King's saying right now, just in line with that. Because the female who called me today told me a lot of patients go up there and they don't come back. 
Mm. Wow. Yeah. Quarantine. Yeah. yeah. Quarantine. A lot, a lot of, of patients. Yeah, a lot of patients go off there. They don't get healed. They get killed. Mm. Right. Wow. Come on. Come right. on, man. Concentration. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, wow. Sir. Yeah, it got me shocking. It's you know, what he's saying, yeah. what he's saying Solid. is like he looking at the picture for real. Right, right. Yeah, from his history and his experience, mm -hmm. he on point with that. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. know right there, boy. <laughs> the yeah. king knows. He, he be putting right. it down. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we're talking about a mass genocide here, Jimmy. Yeah, it will it will turn into that. If they're they're talking about by the end of December, ten thousand people per week dying. Right, but I mean, but he just gave proof and evidence of the people mm -hmm. going there not. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's like, and it shouldn't be, and well, it shouldn't be shocking. I mean, it shouldn't. We look on it. You see, this is what I always was talking about when the people were hunting about. Well, damn, y'all got them Palestinians on there, and I tell you, the same rabbit dog that's biting <laughs> the world is the one that's gonna bite us. So I mean, right. why, are we really shocked? We look at who did they back and support Israel, and you look at what Israel is doing blatantly right. to the Palestinians. Netanyahu come on to yeah, we bombing them, we killing them, we doing. So what? We thought it wasn't gonna spread to Africa. We Gang. really thought this wasn't gonna happen. And that's What's that got to do with black folks? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and we sitting here looking at it now. If you can right. accept, they know if you sit back and can accept the genocide. Of, of one people of ethnicity and not even whether you like them or not it's all a strategy That's it's right. about it's like if a dog is biting somebody if a pit bull is biting this dude I'm gonna go kick the hell out of the pit bull because yeah. he's not biting me. Right. So I'm gonna right. get that damn kick the damn hell out. Boom. I'm gonna knock it. I'm gonna, Cause he's biting somebody, he's preoccupied. That's right. You know right. what I'm saying? But if you sit back and you watch him maul and attack this man and you sitting there spectating, when he's done mauling and attacking this man, he's gonna look to the next victim. And guess who that next sucker sitting there looking like a pork chop is? It's right. yourself. So when we sit here and 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 have lost our reasoning and have allowed to be swayed. Because we don't see how other things may interest and affect. It's not about right. loving another people. Yeah. It's not about being down with another people. It's just about common sense. Right. And you see that this same mass murderer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, I'm telling you, it's like a thief in your hood. Yeah. Right. Even if you got a white man that living next to you, a thief in the hood is a thief in the hood. If he's breaking in that white man's house, right. you know what I'm saying? Then you know clearly at some point in time you're in the hood that my house is next to be broke into. So we got to stop the thievery. Right. Right then and there. So it doesn't surprise me that it went from if you back this type of genocide and terror in, in Palestine and these Netanyahu's, then next that is spread to Africa. And we sit back and we're going to be complacent. We're going to be content when it's coming out. And now all of a sudden they had the case in Dallas. It's coming home. So the ha African here in America is going to be affected. And to the African here in America really understands his place on the revolutionary scale. And that like King Noble was saying that we're at war. Right. And these are signs of war. And we start to take the proper preparations and things to do to defend ourselves and to inoculate ourselves and to be able to right. combat these things coming at us, man, we just waiting to be a victim. But get right, said, we're going to be uh, 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 sacrifices. And, sacrifice. <laughs> man, I, and I love my dear brother, but he waiting for Yahshua to come save him for that. I think that, you know, I, you know, that's the, the religious side of it, you know. So some of us are going to be slaughtered, you know, that's part of, that's part of the war. And, and the sacrifice that, you know, every human being has to make a sacrifice in part of their liberation and, uh, independence so that should be something that we're the only people that look at that as a bad thing right you know what i'm saying when you're talking about for our empowerment our liberation then right. if you're going to give any sacrifice we sacrifice i got homeboys the other day they got shot you know right. what i'm saying they're probably for little or nothing they were right. going for little or nothing right so if you're going to sacrifice when i walk out of my house every day living in the hood there's a chance that i may be murdered maimed or killed so if I have to go through these things, then it might as well be for something that's going to be for the edification and benefit right. and liberation and empowerment of the African people here in America. Right. Makes right. Sense. The general weakness of the white man sense. that I see in all of these situations is that he, everything he does backfires on him because he's yeah. unable yeah. to see the consequences of right. destruction to others and how it's, it's going to come back on him. Right. I see that with Ebola. I see that with the ISIS situation. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it comes back to haunt him. Mm -hmm. It's a backfire situation. Right. Because he, he, he doesn't think it all the way out. Even with the situation um, I see with the ISIS and the terrorists, mm -hmm. it's like, you set that up. Mm -hmm. You By you constantly trying to oppress these people, right. you forced them to become <laughs> right. super, super, mili yeah. super military. Mm -hmm. right. They would have been just regularly eating their samosas, I mean, right. eating their uh, falafels mm -hmm. and right. making mm -hmm. their prayers, but you, you forced them to become very dangerous yeah. mm -hmm. military soldiers. To rebel between And they, rebel, became, yeah. they be, became even greater fighters in, in yeah. a lot of instances than America. Yeah. And that's exactly what they wanted. Yeah. That's their pretense to get into Iraq and Syria. Right. But it backfires right. on him, yeah. though. Yeah. It backfires yeah. on him because yeah. now it gets so far out of control that it's something that he cannot deal mm -hmm. with. 
Same thing is going to happen with this Ebola. It's mm -hmm. all tricks and games. The same happened yeah. with police yeah. brutality. Yeah. Yeah. You think you're right. oppressing other people with police brutality, but what happens is, is those same police start to oppress your children. Mm -hmm. These same arrogant, yeah. egotistical, yeah. maniacal mm -hmm. cops begin to start they, oppressing they, white children. They are killing so white it, kids it, now. Evil doesn't have a have parameters. Right. That's what right. they don't realize. Like Once you open up Pandora's box, it's about, it's, to get every, it's about to get everybody. So he will ultimately be humbled unquestionably. Mm -hmm. right. Sunset, sun set me up. So I talked about Gideon, and then we look up. <laughs> uh, you got now. You got you know, I've got a brother on the show. Question and I'm for my librarian brother. Yeah. Does monkey taste like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> monkey, monkey meat, monkey meat is very sweet. I haven't eaten for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. But monkey meat is a very sweet meat. Mm -hmm. From my experience, when I was in school, mm -hmm. we used to eat it real dry. Right. If you, I mean, dry once, mm -hmm. like after they heat it up and it get dry, we eat it dry. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet, even mm -hmm. sweeter than chicken. Oh my goodness! Oh, now, yeah. what would you, uh, based since you've been in America, what would you contribute to taste like? What would you uh, uh, something compare? Uh, I'm gonna compare it with um. What, 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 was, what would I say? Uh, what would I say? I'm gonna beef compare it with beef. Tea. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. compare it with beef. Now, do you eat it? And I don't want to turn into a cooking show. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> do you have a side <laughs> with it? Do you eat it like jerky? No, just eat it a joke. You know, sometimes because. Like Right. We, we, we're homeboys in yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. We come from school. Yeah. You know, your auntie selling the dry, dry yeah. meat. Yeah. Yeah. You walk, right. in the, walk in the market. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just take one piece mm -hmm. and eat it as a snack or yeah. something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Go home. Sometimes the cocaine has a big meal for everybody yeah. to eat. Yes. But my advice to that right now, if that's what the doctors prescribe, mm -hmm. forget about it. They got a whole lot of different meat out there to eat. Absolutely. But, yeah. Absolutely, but they just trying to change your diet, man. The people, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's why, people, that's, yeah. Well, probably one of the things that go into your whole genetic makeup and this and that is, man, you got a hereditary diet. That's something right. that, yeah. you, that that probably in Liberia they've been doing for a long, long time. Decades. We have to, and I hate to sound too pro-vegetarian, right? Mm -hmm. But monkeys are sentient beings too. Mm -hmm. So right. it's kind of like we they treated us like the monkeys mm -hmm. when we came right. over there. They mm -hmm. ate us. We was the monkeys that they stayed in America, us. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like. We might have to go through a human evolution mm -hmm. with how oh, we there. see other creatures, mm -hmm. because right. o otherwise we draw this same type of karma, this same type of brutality among ourselves. Makes sense. I'm not an animal rights activist, right? But right. I'm forced to be one when my people have been treated like animals like for so animal. damn long. Boy, right. that's that's used deep. to be the monkey. You know that's what I'm saying? Deep, bro. Right. Well, we no, it makes sense. Is it gonna take one of them to start talking for us to say, "Wait a minute, now, <laughs> is this right what we're doing?" Because <laughs> we used to not speak English either. Well, see, right. the, yeah. the connection to the Ebola was that the experimentation that the colleges that were centered in Liberia and some of the other African countries, they were saying this is how it was released because right. they had yeah. been doing experimentation on the monkeys. On the monkeys. Yeah. Then they were released into population. the forest mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or the population yeah. in general mm -hmm. and knowing that the people, the indigenous people right. ate that as part of that diet. Yeah, but that, this is what it is. Um, they are not coming with exact proof. Right. Of what's going on so how will people believe that i mean the native people like africa you find a lot of native people people doesn't have access to go to school how you find mm -hmm. everybody has access to go to school it's your choice to not all go okay. take the loan mm -hmm. but we don't even have finite same company in liberia like that mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it probably the bank gonna finance you if you put some money in the bank mm -hmm. they call it credit mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying they're gonna give you that but how you see every little credit bureau out here places booth that doesn't have that in every part of Africa. I ain't know other countries mm -hmm. if they got that, but in Liberia as we're talking personally, mm -hmm. it's not there. If you had to buy a car, you had to pay cash for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now people doesn't have access to go to school like that. So a lot of people native. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of people native. So the people are looking at the full steps of people who status. Mm -hmm. And the people who status all this stuff, they are not coming up with a conclusion. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, that's what I want this panel. I want to throw this question out to this panel mm -hmm. because you're a council. We are a council. Right. And we see this epidemic in our community and we know it's we're being targeted. How would you say on this panel that we should remedy this issue? Because at the end of the day, uh, the creator or whatever you believe right. in, it's going to manifest, it's going to go through. But if you were in a council call to President Obama's uh, chamber to give him the word on the street, how would you, what would be your advice? First of all, they need finances and resources, okay? They don't need military troops 
going to help with this epidemic. Uh, bullets don't stop Ebola, from what I hear. It's spreading. It's spreading. Blood. So that's the first <laughs> right, thing that's spreading. needed is uh, finances and resources. And I want to give a shout out to Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, because he and his wife sent $25 million um, oh, last great. week to help with finding uh, or getting Where did the money go there. though? They sent a lot of money over in Haiti. Look, and it ain't got there yet. Uh, how long I can spend that money to on something effective though, too. Right. I, look, all I know is the information out there. They <laughs> right, said the man, right. the man gave twenty five million dollars. That's not small chump change. New. You know, for anything. So I, I do want to give him props for that and then sure. say that I appreciate that. He owes that. us. It's our money anyway. Come yeah. on. Right. 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 You're right. <laughs> You're right. You should give everything, but, um, man. They, I read an article yesterday that said they need um, two point four million gloves. Protective mm. gloves over there, and they only have like one a uh, hundred thousand or so, mm. um, and they needed eighty-five thousand. I want to say more bed, eighty-five thousand beds okay. for the people, and they only had uh, five thousand beds. So, so they need the, resources in okay. in mm -hmm. in the beds and in medicine and in money to help you know, so they can get the proper equipment over there. Cause no hospital over in Africa, not that I know of, is not set up like Emory. Like right. right, it's set up like Emory Hospital. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they need that kind of stuff over there. They need the equipment over there to help combat this in a realistic way. Now, is that proactive or reactive? Well, it's it has to be reactive, be reactive now reactive because so. we're already 10 months into this thing. So it has to be reactive. Only the way it would have been proactive is the people that have known that this virus has been around since 1976 and that know about the outbreak in the Congo in 1989 if they had took precautionary steps mm -hmm. made enough ZMAP which is the cure or mm -hmm. the serum teach in place this could have been avoided but like my man King Noble mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. this is planned this is a plan it's population control and there are people there are black people melanin mm -hmm. people out there that I've stated that to that this is a plan by the government to for population control in Africa you man, you're crazy the, the government wouldn't do nothing like that man that's crazy and I tell them no, this reasonable. is my reply it's always insane it always sounds insane when you report what the insane are doing uh, mm -hmm. King okay. Noble, how, how it, it, as an advisor in Barack Hussein Obama's cabinet or as black supremacists, what would be your advice to stop this pandemic, which could become a pandemic? Right. Well, to Obama, it would be to just end his office and end the <laughs> to entire system of white supremacy as a start. I mean, if he's Ooh, really listening to me, step down and order, just bro. eradicate all that, free all political prisoners. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think on a personal level, though, I think that we need to start having more confidence in ourselves, stop believing in the white man to have a solution Thank at you, all, the hell sir. with Obama and his entire system, yes, sir. and start getting into alternative yeah, sure. methodologies. Mm -hmm. right. Some scientists is talking about that the Ebola is a lack of vitamin C in the body. Uh, we approach. talk about collodial silver. There's so many different alternative methodologies for addressing biological warfare out there mm -hmm. that I think a more investigation and research need to be put towards versus putting so much energy and waiting on the white man to come with the miracle serum when he gave you the disease, he come right. with the AIDS, but he gave you the AIDS. <laughs> right. right. So it's really the same goddamn thing. So right. I think, excuse my language. Right. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah no. but I think that we, our people need to study alternative medicine mm -hmm. and come up with alternative ideas in order to heal ourselves effectively mm -hmm. at all costs. And I think if we, we need to counter biological warfare against them with my strategy earlier. Once white crackers start, enough of them start dropping, they go like, hold up, let, let's stop playing. <laughs> stop playing. <laughs> um, uh, even even if you don't if you're not as evil to, to, to get white people just get some dogs because they love them damn dogs <laughs> right, I, say, right. I always say all the time if ISIS had to be head of the dog oh man they have nuked yeah. Syria <laughs> so let enough dogs get Ebola <laughs> and then the white people will, will start to hand out serums what I just have a quick point what <laughs> he said about the dogs uh, another article I'm always reading please black people read yes uh, I'm always reading I they read yesterday dog. where the first nurse that caught um, mm -hmm. Ebola from Spanish. Uh, no, no, not the Spanish nurse. The first nurse in Dallas, right. Nina Pham. Right. Uh, her dog. She, she got uh, quarantined and her dog is in quarantine. But this is the thing with the dog. Amber Vincent, who is the black, the second nurse, the black nurse, right. who was here in Atlanta at Emory. Mm -hmm. There was an article yesterday that stated Amber Vincent, the black lady, is getting 
basically no outpouring of empathy and exactly. support, basically. Exactly. And it, they're theorizing that it's because Ebola has become stigmatized as a black issue. Absolutely. But this dog, like you said, yes, sir. Let the dog, dog that is in quarantine. How much money have they sent? I was about to say they done set up a Facebook Ooh, page. They done sent in all types of donations and know. money for the dog. And I'm yeah, like, are you serious? Yes. Yeah. yes. The white man loves the dog more than well, himself. Well, remember now, and I'm coming to you, Yanga, as well as Cheeks. Yeah. Remember Neither. now, it was the, yeah. the brother uh, who's over the CDC that made the statement that she boarded the plane knowing that she should not have. He made it her fault. But she called the CDC first. first. So how you gonna victimize the victim? Because that's, that's how they that's do it. That's the US strategy. <laughs> that's yeah. it. To victimize the victim, always. Yanga, head of the uh, new Black Panther Party, Obama has found out that you're brilliant. He's heard your resume. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know from you, how do we stop this crisis? Um, I, you know, and I'm agreeing with everybody. There's on the panel, I think the first thing is, like we said, to give Liberia its independence. That all the colonial powers need to pull out of it. And in the process of pulling out. Telling the gangsters the, to leave? Yeah. That, I mean, with no guns, we're just speaking high. No we, we <laughs> right. I mean, you know, if, listen, right. if, if, if you can fantasize about me talking to Obama and him listening to me, <laughs> then we can pretend. <laughs> I like yeah, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. 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 You're right. I'm with you now. I'm with you. Don't be so mad. Ain't realistic. You're right, right. bro. You're right. 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 You right. right. So we, since we just pretended, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. That one of the things that it, it would be independence, having them pull out. Right. That there would be my suggestion that in the process, that they be owned, that they pay back for the uh, exploitation mm -hmm. of the resources of their land, and then with that money being paid back that they can start to build and like uh, King Noble said, build their own institutions right. to start to explore alternative. Because uh -huh. the first thing we have to have is that interference influence from the culture, from the diet, everything, that's what propagates those diseases. Right, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. When, you get, yeah. when we get one of their diseases, look, you look at from Christopher Columbus and everybody, right. when the mm -hmm. uh, Native Americans call smallpox. Small yeah. right. mm -hmm. So exposure to their culture, exposure to their dietary yes, practices, mm -hmm. and all of that is what mm -hmm. promotes and keeps on egging on these diseases and right. contaminates. Mm -hmm. So first thing they have to do, you have to get rid of the source of the damn disease. Come on, you know the white saying? man. And you have, right, and, and when, once they pull out of there, then we want, then a library should be paid back for the exploitation, the rape, and robbery of his mm. You're doing too much. You're doing too much, bro. Right. That's not 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 right. That's Alternative healings and nature mm -hmm. has a funny way of healing itself. Absolutely. Right. Once you remove the anomalies and mm -hmm. move the foreign objects from your body and things mm -hmm. of that nature and get back to a right guidance, then I, I believe and I would know be willing to bank on over a period of time that it would write it it would write itself out. Right. right. You know, brother Cheeks, because you represent needles. the no, needles. Needles. Yes. 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 Cheeks, needle. I forgive That's me, love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, as a warrior, and you come from a warrior class, because those who followed Marcus Messiah Garvey back to the homeland right. had a certain spirit of Spurs, nationalism. Right. 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 Unfortunately, it was shadowed by the flag and the blood of white supremacy. When we, I've asked this question, you as a Liberian, mm -hmm. and now in the veiled vials of the beast in America, <laughs> what would you say if President Barack Hussein Obama asked you, how do we stop this? All right, in addition to what all my brothers just stole me right here, it's the best thing to tell the president right now. Let the people have their own independence and let the people exercise their rights and know their rights, get their own resources, export it themselves, get control over it, and build their own schools, mm -hmm. own hospitals, mm -hmm. and take control over their own land yes, and sir. run their government by their self. Mm -hmm. Let them be responsible yeah. for their self. Right. Mm -hmm. A common example is like, as a kid in the home, when you stay in the house, you rather don't experience responsibility. Right. Exactly. Tell your mom or your dad, right. tell you to leave and get right. on your own. I like mm. that, Take bro. Your time. That's yeah. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> when you get to know everything you had to do in life. Right, right. You know the race in life. Right. If you touch that fire, it's going to burn you. Right. You ain't right. going to touch right. it. Mm. So basically, like, he let the people do what they got to do. Let Liberians, and to the Liberians, too, they got to precise, they got, I mean, oh, they got to exercise that right. They got to mm -hmm. keep saying that. Mm -hmm. They got to take control over themselves and start letting the Chinese, Mauritania, Lebanese yes, coming yes, over and making business while they're laying back. It's not helpful for them. It's mm -hmm. not helpful. Right. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm a musician. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I planted all my songs. It's about developing Liberia. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, okay. Here, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. about developing mm -hmm. my bureau. And now my stat right now, I will work you on the record with a producer called Frank Noma. Yes. He and I have sent a song back to Liberia and playing on the radio. Okay. So now my focus on whatever record I will make right now is to elicate Liberia. Absolutely. Exactly about what we're talking right, right now. Right, yes. right, right. How to, you know what I'm saying, exercise that right, how to get a no, mm -hmm. forget about putting blame on the people, complete forget about the people totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let the people forget about the people. If mm -hmm. they need help, that, I mean, if they need help, America is the world's superpower. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they get, it's necessary to get help to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they are the world superpower. Everybody come in this country. Mm -hmm. You can find all races in America. Yeah. 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 So America is being built by all races. That's right. right. But yeah. preach, bro. Preach. preach. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to assisting people, mm -hmm. they need to give her assistance. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Without that agenda. Right. Without that agenda. But you we know, don't push and that. I want to throw, and I know, uh, Brother Cheeks, you want to get in here. I do. Now, when we talk about what America is doing, and we're talking about the militarization of this whole concept of Ebola, it's not coming from a medical perspective, it's coming right. from a militarized, mm -hmm. right. fear-based control mechanism. Right. Sure. How should we respond, King? Um, what are you telling your subjects? I'm, <laughs> I love it, man, because the white man, like I said, is poisoning himself. So it's all, um, it's a great horror movie for me because he's destabilizing his own, his greed for power makes him continue to destabilize yeah. his own power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think he's gonna destabilize America, he's gonna destroy his own economy. People ain't, ain't gonna wanna leave their house and spend no money. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, he's gonna, they're gonna have to let people live in their houses for free, nobody can pay their mortgage, they're gonna have to give all these incentives. He's working to really destroy his own economy. Mm -hmm. And he can't spend so much time oppre oppressing black people particularly if he has to deal with this big Ebola uh, epidemic that he's creating. So we go, we're going to get, actually get a little break for a yeah. little while. <laughs> so you're saying you know? we should just hold our course? Just hold, our, just hold our course, man. Brother Chief. Uh, I want to touch on this about Ebola and racism really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, but before I get into that, I want to say rest in peace to Thomas Eric Duncan. His memorial service Absolutely. was this weekend. Absolutely. Um, and the good news out of that situation is that his wife and kids have shown no symptoms. See? And they good will deal. end their quarantine tonight at midnight. Good deal. So mm -hmm. peace and blessings to them. Probably. Now, with that being said, getting on Thomas Eric Duncan, a lot of issues surrounding him is in his death is that it was caused by racism, mm -hmm. classism, and patriotism. Mm. Patriotism because he wasn't a United States citizen. Mm -hmm. citizen. Classism because he was poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Racism clearly because he was They're all the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all, they're all, they're all, all tied together. Isms. And so there's been this uh, conceptualization now that Ebola has been racialized. And I'm going to give mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. some examples mm -hmm. of this. The first being with Thomas Eric Duncan, that whole situation. Mm -hmm. And there's a Fox News contributor named Keith Alblow. Mm -hmm. He said this about President Obama. The president is failing to protect the country from Ebola mm. due, due to affinities and his affiliations are with Africa and not us. Ooh. He is their leader. And oh then, he went on, on, then he went on to highlight how Obama has similarities with two of our arch en enemies. His name, Osama, Obama, that similarity, and then his middle name, Hussein, of course, Hussein. being tied to Saddam Hussein. Exactly. And so that was the f another racial incident. And then this thing with Newsweek magazine, the latest Newsweek magazine cover that I just showed y'all before we came to air, mm -hmm. with a picture of a chimpanzee right. on the front of the cover, with the backdrop of the words, a backdoor for Ebola, smuggled bush meat, could spark a U.S. epidemic. Mm. Basically saying that uh, meats and things we import from Africa could be uh, an yeah, avenue gonna for, the for Ebola mm -hmm. to get over here. Mm -hmm. So tell me, panel, how do y'all feel about this racialization of the whole mm -hmm. Ebola pandemic? You know, I, my whole thing is, are we surprised? No. That's, that's what no. gets me, no. you know what I'm saying? Are we surprised, are we surprised what Fox said? Are we surprised what Newsweek is doing? Are we surprised? Our lack of involvement, our lack of identity, I lack it. if this happened to China, the Chinese <laughs> here in America will be raising up. If this happened in Russia, everybody practices a, a nationalization. Mm -hmm. Everybody has an attachment to their homeland. Right. We're the only people that beg, we cry, and start pooting on ourselves and start hooping and hollering 
because someone who historically has shown us historically that they don't want us, don't love us, right. through every type of way, comes out and says something that's only in their nature. In fact, I love a man that tells the truth. I yeah, think that every that, man should yeah. have the right to tell the right. truth. Mm -hmm. I love a white boy that tells me that, you know what, I don't deal with you, I you love no white boy. And isn't that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know the, yeah. the brother's saying. You know what I'm saying? I love the truth. Right. So, you know, and that way, then we share that thing, and we share that thing in common. You don't want to be with me, I don't want to be with you. We right. We about segregated, and separate, out separate lives, and so it's out there. Mm -hmm. I think that we spend too much emphasis and time trying to get them to accept us, right. to love us. Right to talk nice to us. Like we was talking about Bill Cosby and right. that. I think that we, you know, African people here in America we have to be petty. Right. Right. We always had to be right. petty. But when we raise up and realize that the, that the people aren't going to love us and that that is our homeland, our place of origin, our place of birth. But we're separated from that. Exactly. You know how many that's, black that's Americans over here separate sep themselves from, from Africa, Africa. Right. but exactly. it happens over there too. They, exactly. they have a disconnect from the black but Americans here, but we're all intertwined. But you know, it's, it. one of the things is, is like you said, we don't have programs like enough programs like this. We don't sponsor enough programs. We don't have enough independence. We still allow other people, like you said. Now you're right, like everybody, you have everybody going up and down about the Hawks guy. Uh, over the Hawks because he said oh, yeah. that they need uh, they got too many black cheerleaders right. until you have people crying and begging about integration right. they'll be mad because white folks don't accept them right. instead of fighting as hard they'll go all out about that right. instead of fighting as hard for their own independence right, 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 right. You, your issue of the racialization is a very good point because uh, it is racial that's how when they racialize that's how you know it's biological warfare Yes, sir. because if yes, those 10,000 yes, people that are expected to die at what rate did you say? 10,000 per week. Per week, they're going to be African. That right. is racialization. Oh, yeah. right. It's racial. Right. We know yeah. we're killing you, mm -hmm. so keep you over there so right. you can die <laughs> away from us. I mean, it makes sense to me. Of course you would racialize it. Well, yeah. what about the political component? Because at the end of the day, who we all listen to for the most part, we represent the underbelly of America, who they have uh, <laughs> put out of there, you know, wiped right. off the map. X-Men. Absolutely. Right. We're just as, However, the vast majority of our people who want to be good citizens in America right. believe in what the political proponents are saying. What effect or involvement or purpose do you believe that Melanated Willie had politicians <laughs> have toward their people and the truth about this Ebola lie? They're, Capitalism. I was about to say, <laughs> they're just as Capitalism. bad as the, the black people who were selling their people into slaves. Come on. They're not only... Or they're more than likely going to be some of the ones that profit mm -hmm. off of this vaccine and all this stuff yes, they're sir. trying to do with Ebola. Yeah. But it's all tricks. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the Rex 84 tricks. thing, they, they're going directly to them in order yeah. to contain the people yeah. and, you know, make right. sure that they're cooperating with their own uh, enslavement and, right. yeah, and getting that FEMA coffin. Right. Yeah. Amen. And they're playing a role. They're, they're playing a role in disseminating this misinformation yes, about Ebola because they know they're in these positions, they have these constituents or whomever, and they know that whatever they say, because they got their info from the white man, so right. therefore, yeah. it's got to be right. So he's a black man or a black woman in Congress, and so he's got to be in the know. So whatever he says is true, and it's all part of the media propaganda that has us here talking about it today. And all that right. shows me, too, uh -huh. dealing with the brother in Liberia, the divide and conquer strategy. Yes, yes sir. Got Liberians right. killing letter. each other. Mm -hmm. Liberians are killing their own health exactly. people because wherever you find a white man, you find divide and conquer and right, treachery and right. distrust. He brought that. Right. That's what happened right now. That's yeah, what right. the seven year civil crisis that happened in Liberia, that was the cause of it. Because when Charles Stiller came up here, he was sent back to Liberia to go and become the president. Mm -hmm. And when he went up to Liberia, he, he was very, very smart. He say, I can't go through this slavery mm -hmm. job no more. Right. So he began to take power by himself. Mm -hmm. The same thing you and I discussing, he was a very smart guy. Right. Mm -hmm. A very, very smart guy. That's why he gave America high time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. When he went up there, he played them. He played mind games with them. After the guy, because what he did, the first time before he came up here, why he got arrested and where the jail was, he had taken some money from the government because the government wasn't establish the way it was to be established right okay. so he felt it wasn't doing the right thing mm -hmm. and he took some money and came up here and decided to stay up here and make life mm -hmm. so when he came up here he got arrested mm -hmm. and went to jail mm -hmm. and he got and they got him from jail and sent him up there to go and overcome the other president who mm -hmm. were out there not doing the right thing because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. president was native he never he wasn't understanding them yeah that right. rules were quite different from 
what he was trying to do. do. Yeah. Mm. So the same Chastita out there to go and overcome them. When Chastita went up there after he did everything, after the getting the gun and animation, I mean, he never had no money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The man came from jail. Yeah. Right. He, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ninety thousand dollars U.S. cannot buy all the guns. Seven <laughs> years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Seven wow, years, wow, yeah. Yeah. somebody was supporting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he lived all his life out there. He never had no means to come to kid. You know the jail system in America. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's no way you can beat that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Except somebody working with you for the jail up here. Right. 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 So when he went up there and uh, after everything became president and everything, the guy ain't. I mean, it's the same thing we're saying right here. He tried to exist that attitude of being independent. Right. Yeah. Of being, and that's what we need. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. exactly what we need. We got to be independent mm -hmm. to overcome our tribalism and whatever we're going through. Now, let me right. throw this out here at you because we got about five minutes left. I've talked about the political side, but Brother Yang, as you well know, as a... Uh, believer in a higher power mm -hmm. source. I, I'm a spiritualist. I mean, there are those who don't believe. Mm -hmm. But what, what about, we talked about the politicians, but what about the preachers? See, the preachers have mm -hmm. more power in our community yeah. than the yeah. politicians. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they, they really don't trust, based on the latest statistics, right, exactly. the government, political, they know yeah. their lives. Yeah. But the preacher now. He, he's the man or the he woman. Is the man. What should our woolly-haired, melanated preachers be saying in your estimation to the people. accountability. I think that it's going to come from the masses. All power lies in the people. I think that the masses of the people have to hold all their people. We have to have clear cut agendas, whether it's preachers, imams, uh, uh, rabbis, sheikhs, or whatever, whatever you're using. Right. That as a people, if people have to have a voice. The people we have one of the things we have to do. We have to understand what independence is. Mm -hmm. Right. And independence isn't just having one dynamic, charismatic leader that we all follow their thing. It's about right. the rights of the people being right. protected and the right. people having the right to self-determination right. and practice their own destiny. Right. So I think that, and it'll be brief because I know we got to rush out, that we need to hold these people accountable. And if the people are not representing the needs and the wants, the visions, and the goals of the mass of people, then you remove them. Mm -hmm. Remove them. Now, because uh, my brother here has the cross. See, on one, he's a revolutionary on one hand, mm -hmm. but they got him on the religious tip. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's going to come to you, and then I'm going to come to him. As we, as, once again, it comes with the preacher. You know, he understands the revolution. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Okay, we got to wrap it up. How much time we looking at? None. None. Okay. <laughs> In the arena, the Ebola, we have dissected it. We've given you a perspective. We know you are the reason. You are the answer. Yah has control of all of us. Let's hope us that we work as Man. a team yeah, and prepare <laughs> and they assault us. All right, we'll be back. Black Sun, the arena, the panel. The arena, all one word, 2013. Peace. Peace. In the Middle East, Peace in soon. your heart. In Thank here. you for tuning in. Peace. Yes. <laughs> my brother. Yeah, I'm a brother. I think we're out. Appreciate you, man. You too.